House of the Dragon Season 2's penultimate episode offers surprises for book readers and TV fans alike, with plenty of new material to break down. Episodes 5 and 6 saw the Blacks and Greens reacting to the climactic Battle of Rook's Rest, where Rhaenys Targaryen was killed and King Aegon Targaryen was brutally injured. Both sides were weakened by this outcome, with the Blacks crucially losing a dragon rider and the Greens losing their figurehead, resulting in a loss of stability in King's Landing. In Season 2, Episode 5, Rhaenyra and Jace developed a strategy to bring forth new dragon riders, giving those with Valyrian blood the opportunity opportunity to claim the riderless dragons on Dragonstone. In Episode 7, new members of the House of the Dragon cast, including the characters Hugh and Ulf, were brought to Dragonstone for an opportunity to change their lives in an event called the Sowing of the Seeds. The outcome was violent, explosive, and confusing, with a lot happening in the episode's ending that wasn't directly explained. Why Aemon turns Vagar away from Dragonstone. In the final scene of Season 2, Episode 7, Aemon's small council meeting is interrupted by a dragon spotted flying around King's Landing. Given that it's a dragon Aemon doesn't recognize, he quickly rides out to find Vagar, his dragon who's been in recovery since the Battle of Rook's Rest. He mounts Vagar and flies after the unrecognized dragon, which is ridden by Ulf. Aemon pursues the dragon over Blackwater Bay, stopping just shy of Dragonstone before telling V Hagger to turn away and retreat. Aemon is confused by the situation, seeing an unfamiliar dragon with an unfamiliar rider, and he initially gives Chase to gather more information. However, chasing it to enemy territory would be a massive risk, as he knows the Blacks have at least three more dragons in the vicinity, Syrax, Vermax, and Mundenser. V Hagger may be the biggest of the dragons in House of the Dragon, but Aemon knows that they're not invulnerable, and this isn't a fight he should take. Essentially, the Black sent out a warning shot to let Aemon know what was coming. Who is the dragon that Ulf claims and rides? Amid the sowing of the seeds, the massive dragon Vermither is enraged and begins lighting the various dragon seeds ablaze. During the conflict, Ulf is knocked down into the depths of Dragonstone's caverns, and he manages to flee the situation, running through the tunnels and trying to find a way out. Finally seeing the light of day, Ulf thinks he's safe, but he incidentally steps into the den of another dragon, Silverwing. The large grey dragon takes a quick liking to him despite him seemingly stepping on an egg, and Ulf claims her. Vermither isn't the only dragon who's been resting on Dragonstone for some time. While Vermither was ridden by King Yeheri's Targaryen, Silverwing was previously ridden by Queen Alysan and has been riderless for decades. Silverwing is known for having a more docile nature, hence its friendliness toward Ulf. She's not regarded for her battle skills, but she's old and large enough to pose a threat. Vermithir and Silverwing also have a rare bond, reflecting the bond of their previous king and queen riders. Why did Vermithir choose Hugh as his new rider? Vermithir, the Bronze Fury, is one of the largest and strongest dragons in Game of Thrones history, known for being ridden by King Jaehaerys. Jaehaerys is known as one of the greatest Targaryen monarchs who had the longest reign of relative peace in the realm. However, Vermithir still had opportunities to grow strong due to brief conflicts and tons of experience flying and touring the Seven Kingdoms, including the North and the Wall. With that having been said, it makes sense that Vermithir would choose a rider that resembles strength and bravery. Hugh not only calls out to the dragon, claiming that he's ready for death, but he also saves another dragon seed in the process. Vermithir respects Hugh's tenacity and fearlessness. Strong dragons typically want riders who will embrace them, and Vermithir's previous rider is one of the most well-respected men the Seven Kingdoms have ever seen. The dragon has a high bar and sees Hugh for his strength during the episode's climactic moment. How many dragons the Blacks have now? Fortune looks to be in Rhaenyra's favor after Season 2, Episode 7, as she's assembled a huge roster of dragon riders. While the Greens are left with just V Hagger, as Aegon and Sunfire are both in recovery, the Blacks have several dragons. They already had Rhaenyra's Syrax, Jace's Vermax, and Bela's Mundenser, all of whom aren't particularly large or experienced. Damon and Carax's are still on their side despite being rogue for the majority of Season 2, with his story indicating he'll be returning to them soon. With the addition of three new dragon riders, Adam on Seasmoke, Hugh on Vermithir, and Ulf on Silverwing, the Blacks have seven dragons readily available for war, while the Greens only have one. Vagar may be the biggest dragon in the realm, but it stands no chance alone against the team Rhaenyra has assembled, meaning the opportune time for her to strike against King's Landing is likely quite soon. Who is Tessarion and why it's important he's taken to wing? Aside from Aegon, Aemond, and Helena, Elysian Hightower and King Viserys Targaryen actually have one more son. Daron Targaryen exists in House of the Dragon and has been mentioned throughout Season 2, but he hasn't appeared on screen. According to dialogue, he's been at Old Town, the seat of House Hightower, being raised separately from his brothers. Episode 7 importantly notes that he's also a dragon rider with a dragon named Tessarion. Against the seven dragons now accumulated by the Blacks, having one more dragon isn't going to make a monumental difference, especially given that Tessarion is quite young and inexperienced. When it's mentioned that Tessarion has just taken to wing, it's hinting that Daron will likely appear at the start of House of the Dragon Season 3, and that the Greens aren't totally down and out. They still have the Hightower army on the way, and the war is far from over, regardless of the outcome of Season 2's upcoming finale.